using this drawing right so in this drawing for a reduction formula remember we're busy with reduction formula right reduction formula now this sketch is very important people remember this is the positive arm of the x-axis so this is what we call the first quadrant right this is the second quadrant this is the third quadrant and this is the fourth quadrant right and we are going to rotate in that direction meaning anti-clockwise so we're going to move in that direction why because that is when we deal with positive angles right if we move in the clockwise direction it will be negative angles so for now we're only dealing with positive angles so we're going to move anti-clockwise very important that you must take note that here we have zero degrees there we have 90 degrees here we have 180 degrees here we have 270 degrees and then back to 360 to complete your revolution now if I stay within the first quadrant then I will have to move if I move from this angle sorry from this angle down like that if I move from 90 back or if I want to stay in the first quadrant I must subtract 90 degrees or rather theta from 90 remember theta will be an angle smaller than 90 degrees is it clear guys smaller than 90 if I want to stay in the first quadrant I must say 90 minus an acute angle or if I go to the second quadrant it will be 90 plus an acute angle right so there you are those are the two angles 90 minus for first quadrant 90 plus 4 second quadrant then here we also have 270 degrees minus theta if I have to stay in the third quadrant and here I have 270 plus theta if I want to be in the fourth quadrant so those angles are very important we use those two a lot those two very seldom however those are the four angles which you find on the y-axis so all four of them move from the y-axis right so just remember that okay then secondly we also have here if I want to stay in the second quadrant moving from 180 I can also say 180 minus theta ah so now we've got two different angles for second quadrant here I can say 180 plus theta for the third quadrant so I've got two angles for third quadrant and then here I have 360 minus theta for the fourth quadrant right so there you are so we have one two three angles which will work or move from the x-axis right so please just try and understand this and memorize this and in the right hello grade elevens. this is video two on the reduction formulas but remember this was in video one so now we're going to zoom into this one and i'm going to zoom into that one so we can have a closer look at those two angles 90 minus theta and 90 plus theta so first quadrant and second quadrant so let's start right so here i have 90 minus theta in the 
first quadrant. Now if this angle here is 90 minus theta, and that is 90, then this got to be theta. Do you agree with me? Because if I add the 3, I must get 180 degrees. Angles of a triangle. If this is point P, X and Y, then this will be a plus X, and this will be a plus Y. R is always plus, because it is the hypotenuse. Right. Then, the sine of 90 minus theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's Y over R. But, if you look from theta, then you'll notice that Y over R, the same, Y over R, is now the cosine of theta. Can you see that? It is the cosine of theta. And the cosine of 90 minus theta, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, X over R. Then from theta, X over R is opposite over hypotenuse, which is the sine. Aha. So therefore, sine of 90 minus theta is the same as the cos of theta. And the cos of 90 minus theta is the same as the sine of theta. That is two very important identities which we should know. And we call them reduction formulae. Right, that is for 90 minus theta. If you look at 90 plus theta, if I call this angle theta, right, and, I, and if this angle here is 90, then this whole angle is 90 plus theta. Right, okay, cool. Then, if this is point P, then this will be negative x. Remember now, where are we on the negative arm of the x-axis? That is the positive arm of y. R is still positive. Right, so there you are. Then, the sine of 90 plus theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So it is y over r. But, there's theta. y over r is the cosine of theta. Did you notice? Cosine. And both y and r are positive. Can you see, guys? And the cosine of 90, minus, 90 plus theta, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, negative x over r. Ah, now for the first time, we have a negative now. Can you see, guys? And x over r, from theta, x over r is opposite over hypotenuse, so which is the sine, so minus the sine. So there you are, sine of 90 plus theta is plus the cos of theta. Cos of 90 plus theta is minus the sine of theta. So there's your third and fourth identities. Take note here, both were positive. Yeah, that one positive and this one negative. Right, hi, great now, 11s, how are you? Right, last week we spoke about reduction formula, you remember, and we've done two angles, 90 minus theta and 90 plus theta. First quadrant and second quadrant, and our deductions were eventually, look at 90 minus theta, then the sine of 90 minus theta was the same as plus the cos of theta. And the cos of 90 minus theta was the same as plus the sine of theta. Right, then when we've done 90 plus theta, We've noticed that the sine of 90 plus theta is plus the cos of theta, and the cos of 90 plus theta is minus the sine of theta. So those are the first four we've learned last week. You need to go and learn them, unfortunately, and make sure you understand them. Now today, we are going to look now at the next two. 180 minus theta, which is second quadrant, 180 plus theta, which is third. So those are the two we are going to discuss today. Cool. And in your handout, it will be this one here and that one there in our handout. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Right, let's first start with 180 minus theta. Now, if this is 180 minus theta, then this will be theta. Because if you add them together, you should get 180. The thetas will cancel. If that is point x and y, this will be minus x plus y and plus r. So the sine of 180 minus theta 
is y over r. But it is also the sine of this theta. So there you are. So the sine of 180 minus theta is also the sine of theta. Now for the first time you will notice that they don't change. Remember what 90s sine became cos. Now sine remains sine. And the cosine of 180 minus theta, let's see cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So for the first time, it's now a negative x over r. Right. And x over r is also this, the cos of this one. So there you are, the cosine, but this time with a minus. This time with a negative. Is it clear, guys? And now we can also include 10 of 180 minus theta. 10 is opposite over adjacent. So it is y over x, which is also negative. Take note. So therefore, it is minus the 10 of theta. So to summarize, the sine of 180 minus theta is plus the sine of theta. The cosine of 180 minus theta is minus the cosine of theta. And the 10 of 180 minus theta is also minus the 10 of theta. Is it clear, guys? So there you are. Cool. Let's go now to 180 plus theta. Now 180 plus theta is now in the third quadrant. So if that is 180 minus plus theta, then from there to there is 180, then this got to be theta. Agree with me, guys? And theta, of course, if this is x, both x and y is going to be negative now, isn't it? And r is still positive. Right, so let's start off with the sine of 180 plus theta. Right, so the sine is y over r. So it's negative y over r. So it is the, the same as minus the sine of theta. Okay. Then the cosine of 180 minus theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, is also negative. So therefore, minus the cosine of theta, and then the 10 of 180 minus theta, 10 is opposite over adjacent. It's a negative over a negative. Ah, which is a positive. 10 over theta. So to summarize, guys, therefore, sine of 180 plus theta is then minus the sine of theta. Cosine of 180 plus theta is also minus the cos of theta. And then the 10 of 180 plus theta is plus the 10 of theta. All right, again, go and make sure you understand this, guys. In the next lesson, we're going to do 360 minus, and then I'm going to summarize all of them. All right, grid 11s. Now we're going to look at the angles named 360 plus theta back in the first quadrant, 360 minus theta in the fourth quadrant 360 plus 360 minus right so let's first start with 360 plus so that's one revolution uh, or 360 then of course this angle will have to be theta right so x y and r will be positive so sine of 360 will be y over r so therefore positive cosine is x over r so therefore positive and 10 is y over x, so therefore positive. So therefore, sine of 360 plus theta is plus the sine of theta. Cos of 360 plus theta is plus the cos. And 10 of 360 plus theta is plus the 10. So all three are positive because it's in the first quadrant. Then the next angle, 360 minus. 
if that is 360 minus, remember our revolution is 360, then this will have to be theta. So to add up to 360. Is that clear, guys? So sine is y, but now y is negative now. So it's y over x. So it's negative the sine. So 360 is then minus the sine. Cosine is, of course, x over r. So both positive. So therefore, plus the cos. Plus the cos. And tan is y over x. So y is negative. So therefore, minus the tan. So tan is minus the tan. Right? So in the next video, I will bring all of them together to show you an easy way how to memorize them. Right, hello grade 11s, how are you doing? Remember, we're still busy with our different types of angles. We just refresh your memory, right? Remember, we've done so far all the so-called angles, right? You remember the one, the 90 plus, the 90 minus, 180 plus, 180 minus, right? 360 minus, if you remember. So now, today, we're going to look at the so-called Negative angle, sine of a minus theta, cos of a minus theta, ten of a minus theta. Now, angles, people, if they rotate in an anti-clockwise direction, then angles are positive. However, if they rotate in a clockwise direction, then the angles are negative. So, please remember that. Okay, cool. So, let's see here. Here I got... And uh, clockwise, so it's negative theta, and clockwise is positive theta. Y is negative, there, X is positive, R is positive, always positive, and Y is positive. Remember, this is first quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. Don't forget, that is second and third. Alright, here all of them are positive. Remember, there Y is positive, here Y is negative. So the sine of minus theta, there's minus theta, sine is, remember, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's negative y over x. It's a negative y over x here for a positive is also the sine opposite over adjacent. So therefore, sine of a negative theta is the same as minus a sine of a positive theta. Cosine of negative theta, remember this cosine? Adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's plus x over plus r. Ah, now it's positive. And here, x over r for a plus y is also positive. So therefore, cos of a negative y is the same as plus the cos of a positive y. Then 10 of minus theta, remember 10, is opposite over adjacent. So it's negative y over x. Negative y over x, sorry, not r. Negative y over x. So it's negative. And here, y over x is the 10 of a positive theta. So there you are. 10 of a negative theta is the same as minus a 10 of a positive theta. So to sum it up, guys, Sine of a negative theta is equal to minus the sine of a positive theta. Cosine of a negative theta is plus the cosine of a positive theta. And the tan of a negative theta is minus the tan of a positive theta. So those two are negative and this is the only one which is positive. Right, hello, great levens. I hope you are fine. Okay, I don't have any problems. Right, so let's continue where we stopped two days ago. So remember, we discussed all these angles now 90 plus, 90 minus, 180 minus, 180 plus, 360 plus, 360 minus, and of course, the negative angles. Right, so today we're going to focus on these plus and minuses, these minuses and plus. But I know it's difficult to remember which one is negative, which one is positive. So it can be a nightmare. Let me show you now a short way of memorizing this. Alright guys? So let's see. 
Right. Okay. So we have to look at this one here. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Right. So what we do here is in the first quadrant, if you go back to this page here, it, you will notice you pick up that all of them are positive. All of them. Trust me. You can check it out. If you don't believe me, you can check it out that all of them are positive. All of them. All sine, cos, 10. No problem. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. And then cot, cosine and 10 will be negative. Yes, I promised you. In the fourth quadrant, only 10 is positive and the other two will be negative. And in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive and the other two are negative. So it's very... Now there is one exception and it is these two here. These two here. Please take note of them. They don't behave like that. They don't. So the sine of 90 plus and the cos of 90 plus. They behave differently. So these, these are the only two exceptions to the rule. Please make a note of that. They don't behave like that. Like 90 plus, remember, second quadrant, and cos must be negative, but it's positive. Same here. 90 plus, second quadrant, sine must be positive. You see here? Sine must be positive. However, it is negative. So this is, these are the only two that are misbehaving. So just remember those two. Otherwise, all the others are behaving like this. Now, easy way to remember. You can make up your own rhyme. You can say C-A-S-T stand for cast. You see? Stand for cast. C-A-S-T, the cast rule. Or some people will say all students take coffee. Ah, that's a nice one. All students take coffee. So you can make up your own rhyme. So today, guys, just to make it easy for yourself. You can make up your own words. Please, you need to know this. It is important because I will come back to this every time when we do examples. Is that clear, guys? So remember now. All of them positive in the first quadrant. Second quadrant, only sign is positive. The other two are negative. 10 is positive, and the other two are negative. Cos positive, and the other two negative. So you can call it the cast rule, or you can say all students take coffee. Right. 